Hello Aquarius and thank you for joining me for your year 2018 forecast and you've got some wonderful assets to guide you through this year to support you in the most significant of ways. Now I do feel that you could watch other videos which may put a lot more emphasis on the fact that Saturn, your traditional ruler, is moved or has moved into the most psychological part of your scope and we can't ignore this. But this is a year when there are two eclipses that are going to feature your zodiac sign. One, the solar or partial solar eclipse on the 15th of February is going to see the Sun alongside Mercury in your sign. And then the lunar eclipse, which occurs on the 27th of July, is going to see the Moon alongside Mars in your sign. Now this combination obviously for the first six months and the second six months of the year, is going to put a big emphasis on your individuality. And I always feel that with us Aquarius people, we're at our best when we are just feeling free to be us. And also, this is a year which begins with Mars and Jupiter combining in the most powerful and potent part of the scope, the 10th house, which is the midheaven. That is all about our role in life. Now, Jupiter's about expansion, it's about good fortune, it's about go-getting. And Mars, of course, is about instant gratification. But in the sign of Scorpio and combining with Jupiter, it's about authority, it's about gravitas, it's about career, it's about achievement and goals. So don't underestimate what you can achieve this year because it can be truly significant. And also, there's another bonus ball astrally because in the last four months of this year, Venus, the planet of charm, the planet of attraction, the planet of love, but also of money, is going to be spending 12 and a half weeks of those last four months also in the most visible part of you and my horoscope. Yes, the 10th solar house which again is about building and cultivating influential contacts, raising profile, being much more successful. But the story of this year does, of course, begin on its very first day, and the Sun is going to be combining with Venus. Now, Venus in the 12th house can be rather reflective, as, of course, the Sun can be. But it's a rare Aquarius that doesn't have that split dimension in their nature of being in some ways very gregarious, outgoing and sociable, whilst at other times needing that little bit of quiet peace and reflection. And that side of your nature is going to need to shine through at times this year. And Saturn moving into the 12th solar house is significant. But then Pluto has been in this location since 2008. And that is the most influential of all the outer planets because that's about power, that's about transformation, that's about secrets. And it's possible that a lot of things have been going on psychologically in those, that period of time since 2008, in those 10 years. And there could be more revelations this year or more deeper awareness of what really makes you tick. But I think Saturn moving into the 12th house can make you perhaps more conscious of your frailties or vulnerabilities in some ways. But also there are opportunities here, opportunities to use your intellect, to quietly watch and observe how life works and then make your moves. So to think things through very carefully. So at times this year you can be very bold, you can be very assertive and dynamic. At other times you may just want to pick your moments and subtlety could be part and parcel of this. But the combination of that partial solar eclipse and also that total lunar eclipse cannot be underestimated. This is all about you being you. And also from the middle of January, as Venus shifts into your sign and is joined by the Sun two days later on the 20th, this is a chance to really get going. And Mercury is also in a fab location as this year begins. By the 31st, however, there is a lunar eclipse in the sign of Leo. And this is also forging an angle with Neptune. It's just saying in the following six months, be conscious of the values of other people you get involved with, particularly in a romantic context. There could be clashes or misunderstandings about money, but it could just be because you see things very differently. However, Saturn 
is going to be important and is joined by Mars in the last week of March and the first 10 days of April. And this combination can be quite tricky. A combination between Mars and Saturn in the natal horoscope gives people huge uh, abilities to really focus on a narrow mode of operand, oper, oper, operandum. But if you spread yourself too thinly during that time, I don't think it's going to be such a good idea. So if you find yourself clearing up old issues, old debris, having some counselling, becoming much, more, uh, much better read in terms of what does make you tick, it can be a very helpful period. But then in the middle of April, Saturn slams on the brakes, as it does every year for five and a half months. But Saturn is your ruler. It's that part of you that's more traditional, that likes a degree of routine, that likes to know where you stand. It's your modern ruler, Uranus, which gives uh, all Aquarius people the reputation of being much more zany. But actually, there's a duality to most Aquarius people. In some ways, deeply conservative, in other ways, very progressive. And with Saturn going into a retrograde in the middle of April through to the 6th of September, there could be some times when you do just want to have some space. Step back, really think about things carefully. But if there are turbulent emotional issues deep within you that are from the past, that are unresolved, they could come up in the last 10 days of April as Mars moves the lights alongside Pluto. But also you may find yourself subject to some very powerful forces around your desires. You can be logical, you can be a bit detached about relationships, but this could see you really, really wanting something in a way that you have perhaps have never experienced before. And it could see you pull towards a new person who gives out a very, very alluring vibe, but you may want to keep it hush-hush between you, at least to begin with. Now, did you think at the start of this year that you might consider uh, a change of residency? Well, if you didn't, you may be surprised that from the middle of May through to the 7th of November, this could be on the cards. You're going to be in charge of the process, Aquarius. It's not going to be forced upon you, but you may find yourself very restless because you're in a short, your modern ruler is then tracking its way through the sign of Taurus. But Taurus, the fourth house, is about permanence. It's a fixed sign like you. It's about steadiness. It's about familiarity. So it could be that you get itchy feet but don't actually make any changes at all. Or you actually change the place where you're living now to make it suit your needs better. It just depends. Or it could be that there's going to be comings and goings. If you've got youngsters, they may leave home or they may have left home before and be coming back again. So things can be quite fluid around home, emotion, family. All these areas can throw up some surprises. On the 7th of August, however, Uranus itself slams on the brakes and through to that early part of November is also in retrograde. This just gives you a chance to think more about your needs in terms of intimacy and space in terms of where you live. Often a very important consideration for Aquarius people. But then there's another part of you since last year's eclipse or solar eclipse in the sign of Leo for the last six months of last year where you wanted to be much more joined up with other people or at least one in particular. So there can be a counterpoint to that that comes from the transit through Uranus. But then for that last eight weeks or so of the year, Uranus moves back into the buzzy, vibrant third house which has been electrifying your nervous system since 2011 full time. Now, the 27th of July also throws up that lunar eclipse, which occurs in your sign and sees the passionate energies of Mars alongside the moon in your sign. This can be a bit of an unstable link. It just says to you that when it comes to relationships, you cannot stop being you. Yes, it's important to cooperate. It's vital. Yes, it's important to integrate ourselves with others to a degree, but this is urging you not to become t codependent, to keep a degree of your own interests, your own activities, because that's going to be important to your peace of mind. But the solar eclipse, sorry, the partial solar eclipse, which occurs on the 11th of August, forges a brilliant link with Venus, the planet of love, in your sister air sign of Libra. 
And this is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful aspect. So if you are Footloose and Fancy 3, the last six months of this year, as long as you don't give away your power too much, could see a significant change around your status. However, of course, Jupiter is also going to be moving from the 9th of November, shifting out of this sector of success and powerful uh, powerful interactions into one which is much more democratic, which is much more to do with friendships and networks. It's going to be a very sociable end to this year, I feel, and you can find yourself very much in the limelight. But also the North Node, the point of destiny, which moved into your sector of relating on the 6th of May last year, is going to be moving backwards, inverting into a much more practical area on the 7th of November. This is an opportunity to make sure that things are still working in terms of your everyday needs, organisation and structure. It's a fantastic opportunity this year. It is true that there is going to be a lot cooking in the back of your situations. But remember, you are the Zodiac's natural born uh, psychologist. So you're not lacking in insights. I just think you're going to grow them hugely this year and use them to guide your moves in a much more outgoing and successful way. And you may be amazed by just how much you can punch through and raise your profile in 2018. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Good luck and goodbye for now. Thank you for joining me. If you'd like to know more, please visit my website at www.patrickarundel.com or download my free app in iOS, Google or Facebook at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thanks and goodbye.